Hello YouTube, it is your Webby3, back with another kicking book review. We got a fun novel for you today. It is the book adaptation of the original 1933 King Kong. The book is by Edgar Wallace, Marion C. Cooper, and Delos Lovelace. Yeah, as I mentioned in my Godzilla King of the Monsters novelization review uh, for the 2019 film, check that out. Should be a pretty recent video if you're watching this when it comes out. Um, but I'm, I'm not big into novelizations of movies. I think it can be a waste of time and often doesn't add much, but I just reviewed the Godzilla King of the Monsters one because it was free with my Audible premium subscription. And the same goes for King Kong. <laughs> the same goes for the 1933 King Kong adaptation. Um... It's a book. Like, it's a book. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't feel, I feel like I don't need to recap the story of the original King Kong for anyone. It's one of the greatest and most famous movies ever made. I don't need to tell anyone what King Kong was about, especially the original. But, uh... <laughs> I just, I don't feel like this book added anything, really. The only things it seems to add were more sexism and a lot more racism. Now, of course, the original 33 Kong is kind of sexist and kind of racist. I mean, it's a product of the time. We, we don't have to like those things. It's okay to be offended by them, but, you know... You can't change that. What are you going to do? Edit the natives and Anne out of the film entirely? No. And even then, it's a different movie. There's, there's something that just feels inherently... I don't know. You know, I'm not a woman or a person of color. So, you know, I feel like I can really only maybe speak up as much about homophobia and things like that because that's more relevant to me specifically but product of its time you know you just have to kind of move past those bits you know but i mean like the racism's a lot in the book they just in the race stuff they're just like oh this this video's gonna get you know good thing i'm not monetized right now uh, I don't really super care about monetization that much. I'm, I'm not trying to... You know, I, I care about making money from, like, my writings and stuff, but, like, even if I had YouTube ad revenue, I would, it would be, like, barely anything. But it's like, the book just straight up calls white people superior, and it's not cool. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's a lot less woke. Uh, but if you can handle that and you're into the novelizations, you know, go ahead. I kind of like the older writing style. I'm a big fan of older books. That's not a snobby thing. That's just, I just kind of like older writing styles because it's just, you know, something different. Um, so that was kind of fun, but it doesn't really bring anything super new to it. You can see a bit more inside Kong's head, a bit more of what he's thinking and things from his point of view. And that's really the only thing that the book brings to the table, in my opinion. I don't know. I, I did this close at the beginning. I think that novelizations of movies, for the most part, are kind of dumb. <laughs> I mean, it's good for people with disabilities. Like, honestly, if I was deaf, I would probably personally just prefer to read the book than watch a movie. Because... You know, if you're a deaf person, you're also not hearing the music or anything, and a score is a huge, huge part of a movie. And, you know, because, like, we have subtitles, yeah, but, I mean, you just can't really subtitle a score. You can say what kind of music is playing, but if someone's deaf, and they were, if they were, especially if they were born deaf, they're straight up not gonna, that's still not gonna register, you know? Or maybe if someone has, like, 
you know, because I actually do have some auditory sensory issues myself. Like, at movie theaters, I have to take earplugs and stuff because I, like, can't take it. Uh, but maybe someone who has, like, auditory sensory issues and, like, really can't watch, like, adventure, thriller, action-y films that have, like, a lot of noise, you know? Maybe, you know, this would be good for them. But, like, if you just you know, liked the movie and then want to read the novel, it, you might find it a waste of time. I don't know. It's all up to just how you are as a person and your personal preferences. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. You know? I think that's why YouTube reviews are more popular than, like, quote-unquote professional reviews because it's like, oh, the person reviewing it is just another, you know, human like me and they're not a snob about the film. But, yeah, you know, I just don't feel like it brings enough to the table. It's more offensive if that bothers you. And it can give you a little bit of an insight into Kong's head. But, I mean, after all these years, we've kind of had that a lot. So, it's just not worth it, in my opinion. That's not to say I didn't enjoy it. But it just, it's a, you know, it's a novel. It's a lot of time out of your day. If you have the Audible Premium subscription, it is an included in your subscription. If you don't have the Premium subscription, you can buy it. I would say novelizations of movies are much more worth it as audiobooks because you can do other things, you know, while you listen to them. Like, my commute to and from work is one to three hours depending on the traffic because I work in a place kind of infamous for its traffic. My commute to school and back is three hours one way, three hours back. I live in a small town, so I got to commute an hour just to run errands. So, you know, it's a lot. It's like actually a lot. But, you know, if, if, if you want to, it's all up to you at the end of the day. I can only really recommend it to people who are huge kaiju or Kong fans. So that's it. Thank you all once again for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I'll see you all next time.